Hello, my lovelies. This is Paisley Wild, and hey, it's a three cent video. It's been a while since I did one of these. Um, here it is a sunny April day, 2021, post mask mandate, sort of, here in North Idaho. Uh, as you can see, my hair is not done. I've got no makeup on. So this is Paisley Wild <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> um, I had a topic that came to mind, and I don't know that I want to devote a whole show to it. So um, I'm going to do a three cent video, and, and we'll see what happens. Um, so it, it's a topic on family. Um and grief, honestly, because there's a correlation to teenage years, I think, this is my opinion, this is all me, it's not any study I've done or book I've read or anything like that, this is my own thought process, because I think there's some truth to it. Um, so, as we all know, teenagers often go through an angry phase and it can affect them anywhere from you know 5 to 30 teenage years I know they it's a couple decades there but um, the reason why I do a big spread like that when I say years is because I have a 6 year old and I have a 28 year old and a 26 year old and um, as I've mentioned in the past, my, my younger boy is on the autism spectrum. And uh, um, so there's some cognitive development that is delayed as a result. And that's really normal. And um, it's not really a shocker or anything like that. It's, it's a normal thing for those who have uh, cognitive uh, developmental disabilities to um, develop at a, a different rates or different speed than, than others. And, um, so, and this is really kind of an important thing because I discovered something yesterday that my younger son had unfriended me on Facebook. Well, you know, it's like, all right, he unfriended me on Facebook, so what? Um, it's actually a sign of something else, a, a bigger issue that he and I have been having. And, um, and, uh, and this is why I mentioned grief earlier. And if this takes more than my usual three cents, well, maybe I should have done a show. Anyways, so the reason why I bring it up is so often in a child's developmental process, which happens, like I mentioned, at different speeds or different rates for, for everyone. And um, in the teenage years, often the cognitive awareness changes for a child because they're no longer a child and they're switching to the adult mind and there's some transitions there that are often interesting and hard to deal with. They're more aware of things and they're starting to shed some of that childlike um, beliefs and mannerisms and and fictions and one of those fictions is that your parents know everything they will always be there for you and um, they can do all the things and, and in that they're superheroes basically because often our children put a put parents on a bit of a pedestal because they're like woohoo my parent can do everything they can do anything they're superheroes um, and as a result of that cognitive development, they began to realize that their parents are not superheroes, that they are human, and they make mistakes, and, um, oops, no wonder I can't see, um, they make mistakes, and we, as parents, are fallible. We, um, have our own needs, we have our own wants, our own dreams, and um, our own wishes and desires and all that. We are people, we're human. And I think there's a grief process that kids are going through during their teen years uh, where they're realizing that their parents are not superhuman. 
they're not super able and they can make mistakes and they are fallible and so there's a grieving process I think when um, they're coming to terms with that and as a result often people deal with grief uh, using anger actually anger is kind of a, a step if you will in the grief process it really is um, and it's not all kids go through this anger phase the same some it's really quick some it's earlier some it's later for those who are cognitively impaired or disabled alternately abled disabled is such a bad word I think um, that um, that happens later or sometimes that grief process is longer um, and sometimes those kids get locked into those mental attitudes those that that anguish if you will because they have a hard time accepting that their parents make mistakes too and their parents are human and the longer that the grief process takes the more set in stone, if you will, the behavior. And so sometimes kids spend a lot of time being angry well into their 20s, sometimes even 30s, uh, being angry with their parents because their parents are human. And, um, <laughs> and we all screw up. And so, yeah, it's a grieving process. And one of the steps that we need to make as children as we accept the mortality and um, humanity of our parents is not just that they're human, but also that at the time of your childhood, they did the best they could with the tools that they had. Now, I'm not saying that all parents did everything right because, well, a lot of them didn't. A lot of us didn't. We made mistakes. Sorry, somebody else drove my car and the seat is just in the wrong spot. Oh, hey, so much better. I can see. I can do those things. Note to self, adjust the seat before you drive. It's safer that way. But anyway, so even though it's nothing to really forgive, um, because it just is, in, a, in, in our minds, we have to basically forgive our parents because they did the best they could with the tools that they had at the time. And that as they matured, the tools changed, the abilities were different, um, they learned things. That's why often uh, families with multiple children, um, the younger children have an entirely different set of rules than the first child or second child, etc. And often the children who are considered the babies are seen as spoiled by um, the older children just because uh, the rules are different for the family. Um, the acceptances are different, the permissions are different, the allowances are different, all of that's different. Um, not always, but quite often. And so there's anger towards the children too. I mean, and it's, even though there shouldn't be, there is, just because, well, we are human, remember? We screw up, we all do. So... I personally, as a parent, don't feel like I should apologize to any of my children for the way I've raised them because I feel that I did the best I could with the tools that I had at the time. And there are 20 years, <laughs> real years between my kiddos, um, from the youngest to the youngest, or youngest boy to my daughter. And, um, and her needs are so different than the boys had needs, you know, totally different girls, boys, very different animals. Um, and 
those with trans kids, those are extraordinarily different too. It's like they've got all the problems of both. Um, let's see, there's a level of patience there that I haven't had to experience yet, but deep breath parents. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, as the children age and become adults and they go through this grieving process, they have to learn how to accept that their parents are human. They have to basically forgive their parents, um, even the ones that don't seem like they're apologetic or or haven't asked for forgiveness, if you will. Um, and they're because again, the parents still feel that they did the best they could at the time. Um, but uh, forgiveness is generally not for the transgressor. I really don't even like using that word. It's the, the one who, the parent, or the person who, who did the, per, the harm. Generally speaking, the forgiveness is more for the, the victim, even though I hate using that word in this particular situation, because children aren't the victim in this, uh, the child. Parents generally don't feel the need to request forgiveness from the child because of the way they were raised the kids. And and I don't. I really, truly don't. Because at the time, every decision I made seemed to be the right decision. With the information I had and the abilities I had and the experience I had at the time, those were the right decisions. And if I were to go back in time, I don't know that I would make different decisions. Because I don't know. And I can't go back in time, so... Um, maybe it's my own autism coming out there, but uh, I just don't feel any jazz for that forgiveness. So, um, as a result... My, my younger boy feels that he, I should apologize and be humbled, if you will, for the way I raised him in his childhood, which, um, from my perspective, is an entirely different story than the one that is from his perspective. And, man, it's complicated. It really, truly is. So, we are currently um, at odds with one another. And uh, um, he shut me out of his life. Which, as a parent, mm, man, that's a devastating feeling. It's a horrible, horrible one. Because all I can think is, what the bloody hell did I do wrong? Well, I was a parent. That's what I did wrong. Honestly, um, and again, I don't know that I would make different choices. So, anyways, the whole reason for this video is because I want to put it out there, parents. Your kids are going to hate you. At least once. Maybe hate is a strong word, but dislike may be the better word. Depends on your children. Depends on the relationship you have with your kiddos. I honestly didn't think I'd ever be in this particular boat with my younger boy. My older one, yeah, but not the younger one, because the older boy and I bumped heads on more than one occasion. Um, but the younger boy, yeah. grieving process for a parent. Because I don't know what he's doing, you know? I don't know where he's at. I don't know what's going on in his life. I don't... I don't know. And to not know is, is a burden. And it's heartbreaking. And it's brutal. And... 
I guess it's his way of punishing me for the transgressions that he feels that I have committed against him. And you know what? It's his right to cut me out of his life. Just like it's my right to cut toxic people out of my life. He feels that I'm toxic. So, and I've mentioned on more than one occasion that you don't have to be around the toxic people. You can cut them out of your life. You can move on. You can divorce them. Whatever it is you need to do. And so, um, being on the other side of that spectrum, on the not spectrum so much, but the other end of that uh, relationship, I get it. It hurts. It's painful for those who have been cut out. Um, they don't always understand. Often they don't understand. They don't understand their toxicity. Um, the best we can do, any of us, is just be true to ourselves. Do the best we can. And when we see people struggling and having problems, we need to remember that often they are also doing the best that they can. And regardless of where we are in our lives, that's all we can do is the best that we can. This entire video, yeah, that's why shadow work's important and therapy. It really is. Um, so if you need therapy, go do it. If you think you might, go do it anyways. Because it's better to do than not in this particular situation. Really. So, anyways. I love you all. I'm glad you joined me here on my adventures. And uh, um, follow me on my story. And the things I do. And all that jazz. Um, the show will be doing some more fun stuff hopefully this summer. Since the lockdown is easy. Here in North Idaho, we rebel against everything. So, I don't have a lockdown. Um. And Penny Me is back in school. Um, because I know that I am not the right person to educate her right now. We are not in that, that particular spot in our relationship. That's okay. So anyways, to my son, should you ever watch this, I do love you, kid. And at some point, I hope you want to talk to me and involve me in your life. I really, truly do. But I get it this point we're not there so yeah anyway this is Paisley Wild this has been a 3 set video where I just kind of get on my soapbox and verbally vomit all over the place which is kind of what I did today but I needed to get it out there if you have questions or suggestions about me and send me the email at wildpaisley at gmail.com it's w-i-l-d-e P-A-I-S-L-E-Y at gmail.com. You can always check out the website too. It's www.paisleywild.com. And, um, yeah, there's groups and chats in there, by the way. Mmm, I should probably add a parent group in there. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, come join me. Check it out. And, um, you know, love your kids. Even when they don't let you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Merry meet, merry part, merry meet again with love.